Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. And welcome back to another one of my Am I a Chap? Gentlemen's Outfit Review Series, in which one of you viewers sent me your, an image of you in your finest attire and you've asked for my observations, but not just that, we use it as an opportunity to, to share your inspiration with others so that we can all be motivated to be well-dressed, intentionally well-dressed men as we go through life. Now today is something a little bit different because Richard, the, the originator of these images, is a man who likes to dress in something of a vintage style. And I, I never really have subscribed to this style of dressing myself, but I know the, the sort of uh, the throwback to the 30s, 40s and 50s, often described as the golden years of men's attire, um, is very popular. There's a whole revivalist uh, sort of festival program which goes on in the, in the UK here, uh, centering around Goodwood in the summer months. And I've always promised I'll get there one day, but I haven't had the opportunity yet. So Richard has kindly shared a couple of images of his outfits just to give us an idea of how he dresses in his revivalist sort of uh, mode. So I've got two, two sets here. We can talk about the pros and cons of dressing in this style in the modern world, but let's just for a moment just enjoy the outfits and the, the uh, component parts. So here's Richard in uh, what you might call kind of a smart, casual 1930s, 1940s look. Uh, and initially, it, it blends in rather well with the more formal modern style. I think you could pull this off with a few minor alterations, hugely appropriate in the modern day just as well. But when you know your details, you can understand what sets this apart really from perhaps the modern style. So let's start from the ground up as I usually do. And at the feet, we see a really splendid pair of shoes. Now, I've never owned uh, a pair of spectators, as some people call them. Uh, but here we see our brown and cream Loke Sloan from the Loke 1880 range. So a pretty good handmade British uh, manufactured shoe from Loke, one of the larger volume shoe manufacturers from Northampton. Now, Richard refers to these as spectators which is what they tend to be called uh, in America. Here in the UK, the traditionalists will refer to this type of uh, duotone shoe as a correspondent shoe. And I love the story behind why they're called correspondents. Because this style of shoe used to be favoured by lounge lizards and cads, shall we call them, gentlemen of the night who enjoyed the company of married ladies. And as a result, these men frequently were named in divorce proceedings as the correspondent of the divorce case. Hence, these shoes tended to be the reputation or to gain the reputation as being worn by cads and adulterers. And hence, they ended up being called correspondents. So I rather like the story. I rather like the shoes. I mean, I've never owned a pair myself, but uh, do you know what? I would be tempted if some crossed my path. I like them a lot. But immediately, can you see how the vintage style of this shoe catapults this outfit into the era for which the wearer intends it to be a representative? 30s and 40s immediately come to mind. Maybe 50s, by the 60s, these shoes had gone out of common wear. But they look good. Moving up the trouser. Now, the cut of the trouser, again, puts us in a vintage mindset. It's got a baggier cut, quite a looser cut. Uh, what we're looking at is a brown pinstripe made in England trouser by Ozone Clothing, and they are known for their reproduction uh, lines of clothing, typically from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And again, because of the cut, because of the styling, a little bit higher on the waist, a little bit more volume to the material, it again begins to look like its era. It's got a, a turn up, a little cuff at the bottom, which again, the little touches demonstrate that the wearer is taking us to a different era. I like them. Good creases too. Well done, sir. Got the iron out. Uh, the jacket. What have we got here? The jacket, modern linen jacket, which Richard tells us he picked up in TK Maxx. Well, I've bought many jackets in TK Maxx, a budget retailer. And 
let's have a look. What have we got here? Let's have a little bit of a close up. So what we've got is a sort of window pane plate style, uh, two button notch lapel jacket, odd jacket for just general wear. You could describe it as a sports jacket. I can see the pockets are patch pockets, so sewn directly on, rather sort of simple construction. Nice casual daily wearer, good length on the sleeve. Um, hard to argue with it, looks good. Of course, what I would say is if you're wearing a jacket and it's got a breast pocket, what do you think that breast pocket is there for? It is there to put a pocket square within. Uh, so this would have been complemented by a pocket square, in my opinion, uh, or even a lapel badge, boutonniere. This would have again played into that re revivalist outfit, I think, to a degree. So uh, shirt, that uh, shirt is a modern linen shirt, but quite a small undersized um, lapel, I would say, or collar rather, big pardon. Uh, and again, it looks like something which would have been more in keeping with that era for which we're trying to show here. So I think it looks good, but clearly the star of the show here is going to be that tie. Now the tie is uh, late 1930s or early 1940s, an original item, uh, an oriental silk tie with a very bold pattern on the front. Non-symmetrical, right? So this is important. This looks like a small piece of art. It's got a tree on there, maybe a, you know, a scene. It's got concentric material on there, different patterns, different um, texture very much the star of the show. It's going to draw the eye. If you enter a room wearing this, they're not going to notice anything else you're wearing. This is what's going to be the compliment grabber or people who are going to ask questions about it. Uh, and again, catapulting you back into that era. It works a charm. I, you know, for the right situation, maybe not a business meeting or somewhere where you're trying to create an impression in the modern world, but certainly for a situation where you're endeavouring to demonstrate something of your individuality, it's going to work well. Um, just talking about some of the accessories, the belt, for instance, the belt is a light, uh, lighter coloured uh, brown, beige, whatever you'd want to call it, leather. Uh, it's the contrast between the trouser, which we know is um, a brown pinstripe. It's a member of the brown family, uh, but it's so light that it is going to draw the eye. I can only imagine that's been done intentionally to make the outfit look, uh, again, more revivalist. Uh, and on top of the head, we have, what have we got? An Akubra Capricorn, a uh, modern day hat made in Australia. And perfect for the gentleman who wants to avoid the sun. It's a utility hat. It looks great. What an outfit. For its intended purpose, you've knocked it out of the park in so much as you're delivering a revivalist outfit uh, with many features which immediately take us back to the 1940s, 50s, I would say. Works well, sir. This would be a knockout in Goodwood, for sure. Maybe a little tame, actually, for Goodwood. But Richard has sent us another outfit, which this one definitely could easily be worn in the modern era Nobody's going to bat an eye here, um, even though, well, you could argue, is it revivalist at all? This is a demonstration, really, of how a well put together outfit crosses the boundaries of time and space because it looks as good today as it may have done many, many years ago. So let's look at the shoes where, you know, your eye will often begin when you're appraising a gentleman's outfit. And what we see here is a burgundy uh, a cap to Oxford, light broguing, made in England by Loke. And just, let's have a quick zoom in so I can see it properly. So what we are looking at, yeah, it's got a little bit of broguing across the toe cap and just around uh, the vamp, picking out some features. The most important thing for me is that the shoe has been brought up to a mirror shine and it looks fantastic. I mean, this is a great pair of shoes. Um, you know, this is gonna go with any outfit you've got and that shine, it's going to be a compliment grabber wherever you go. It's a winner winner, sir. Can't fault that. 10 out of 10 for the shoes. Moving on to the trousers. Um, these are Morello of London trousers. They're vintage specialists who focus on 40s and 50s style, made in England. And essentially, uh, it's a grey flannel trouser, grey flannel slacks. Uh, cuffed at the bottom, so a little turn up perfect break on the shoes. This is exactly where I aim to get the break of my trousers. Halfway down the lacing system of the shoe. I love the colour. You've got a crease down the front. 
these trousers work as well today as they may have in the 40s and 50s where they first started being seen with gentlemen's outfits. This doesn't date them at all. Shows how a well curated outfit worked in the 40s and 50s works in the 2020s. Moving up, we see a double breasted blazer. Again, you know, you, you could wear this today. Nope, well you do obviously, but what I mean is, uh, you know, wherever it started life, it looks good. The jacket double breasted navy blazer by Dun & Co, uh, made in the UK. Um, and Dun & Co actually went bust in about the mid 1990s. Um, so yeah, kind of dates them a bit, but it's a nice blazer, nice, nice color, um, gilt buttons, can't fault it. Length of the sleeve perfect. Just seeing about a half an inch of the shirt visible beyond the cuff. Lovely fit, lovely relaxed fit, not too tight. Often you see double breasted, you know, they cinch up a little too much. This is a relaxed fit. Looks like you could wear it all day with comfort, no problem at all. Looks great. Um, again, no criticism here, Richard. Where's your pocket square? Even a little white straight fold at the pocket would have added a nice little touch of adornment, which would have worked well. But maybe next time, eh? Opportunity to add a little extra. Uh, but there is an adornment on the lapel. Um, it's peak lapel, as quite often we'll see in a double-breasted garment. And a nice little badge demonstrating, you know, the wearer's affiliation to a group or something like that. Um, so yeah, very nice. I like it indeed. Um, so, what else have we got? Uh, the shirt. The shirt is a spear point collar shirt by from Revival Vintage, a company which clearly again um, makes its clothing with that period in mind. Spear point shirts, very much less popular today. You won't find them on the shelf unless you're going made to measure or bespoke shirt from one of the big companies in London, say, because um, I don't know, I, I find there's a lot of collar to keep control of. So you'll often find gentlemen using a, a collar bar as has been employed here to make sure that it is all looking uh, nice and dandy. But yeah, it's not too bad. I like it, it's okay, it's in keeping. Uh, light blue, perfect for the outfit, I say. I'm wearing a light blue shirt myself. Often opt for it sometimes just instead of white, but it works well. Uh, and the tie, nice tie, classic striped tie. Uh, it's, I don't think it's a regimental tie, it's just what we would call a club tie, but you know, good choice of colors. You've got the blue in keeping with the outfit and the red stripe, which just ties in with the shoes really, the burgundy, the burgundy shoe, same family of colors. I really love this outfit. It, I would wear this myself. And on the head, what have we got? An Akubra Stylemaster, uh, grey fur felt, made in Australia. Um, and that company has been in existence for over a hundred years uh, in Tasmania. And it is often, you know, considered to be the Australian classic utility hat. And again, that grey color tallying up with the trousers. What a superb outfit. I mean, you could wear this anywhere today. The only things which really, I think, date it is the spear point collar, maybe the cut of the trouser. A little bit more material on there. But actually, in this modern era, I think that works so well. I love it. These have been two really masterclass outfits, superbly curated by Richard, who has his style, and he's not afraid to dress in keeping with that style. So well done, sir. You are a chap, early salute for you there, uh, and you've done very well. And I think there's some lessons for us all to learn there. Very much so. Cracking outfits. Now, if you've enjoyed these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, click subscribe. If you would like to see an image of you in your finest outfit here on the channel, drop me an email. Just email me those images, top to toe, in as much detail as you can. And if there's any specific sort of parts of the outfit you'd like to draw to my attention, like your watch or something like that, or shoes, you know, send me an extra image of those. Just makes life easier for me to share it with the chaps who will be inspired by your motivational outfits. So there we go. Richard, thank you, sir. You are a chap. Thank you to all of you for watching. Uh, don't forget, if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or even become a patron and benefit from the additional videos I make for my patrons each and every week. So until the next time, take care, and I'll see you again very soon.